Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use slicers with your group by and pivot by formulas. So slicers are one of the big advantages of still using pivot tables. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can adapt them in order to use them with your group by and pivot by formulas. Let's take a look. So the first step we're gonna do for creating slicers for our group by and pivot by function is to create a table for our data set. So we're gonna use table slicers as our group by and pivot by slicers. So we first need a table and we can do that by selecting any cell in our data and going up to the insert tab and clicking on the table command. That's gonna select all of our data. Here we can adjust what range of data has been selected. And here we wanna make sure that we have the option clicked for our table has headers as our first row here is column headers. And we can press okay and we get a table for our data. Now we can go up to the table design tab and we can choose a new style for our table. And we can also name our table. So right now it's got the name table one. And we can just name that to sales so we can type over the name and press enter. And now our table is named sales. Now that we've got a table for our data set, we can use this to create a group by or pivot by formula based on our data set. So in this example, we're gonna use a group by function, but it's going to work the same way with a pivot by function. So in this example, we're gonna group our subcategory field and we're gonna summarize our amount field here. And then how we're gonna summarize it is by taking the sum of the amount. And when we press enter, we get our summarized values by subcategory. Next up, we're going to create a slicer for our table so we can select any cell inside of our table and go back up to the table design tab. And here we've got the option to insert a slicer. So we can click on that. And then we can choose what field we wanna add our slicer for. Here, we're gonna choose the category field and get a slicer for our category field values. And when we've got that selected, we can go up to the slicer tab and choose some other theme for our style. And now if we select this, you'll notice that it filters our table, but this doesn't affect the results of our group by function. Now, if we add a total on our table and just add up the amount field here, then we're gonna see the same effect. So our total doesn't change as we filter our table but we do have a function in Excel that is going to give us results based on the filtered values. So if we use the subtotal function, and select the sum option, and sum our amount field, then this is going to change based on our filtered table. Now for our next step, we're going to create a new column in our data set, and this is going to allow us to filter our group by function with. So I'm gonna call this include, and in this, we're going to use the subtotal to calculate if the row is visible or not based on our slicer. And to do that, we can use the subtotal function with the count A option. And then here, we're just going to count any value in our current row. So let's stick with the subcategory field. And this should produce one for each of the rows in our table when it's not filtered and zero if it is filtered. So here, I'm just gonna use the sum function here to demonstrate what happens when we filter our columns. So here we've got 45 rows in total when we have an unfiltered table. And you can see as I 
filter this, then that total is going to change because for my filtered rows, that subtotal function produces a zero. Next, we're going to adjust our group by function so that it uses our new column to filter the results. So let's go and edit our formula. And we've got some optional arguments here. And I'm gonna skip all of those up until the filter array argument. And here, I'm gonna add in my include column. And this filter array argument is going to filter out all the zero values in my data. So zero is gonna get filtered out and anything non-zero will be included in the group by results. And now if we try and use our slicer, then we're gonna see that the results of our group by function update accordingly based on the slicer. Now you might not want to add a new column into your data set so another alternative is that you can create this virtually within your group by function by using the by rows function. So the by rows function is going to allow us to virtually calculate this include column for each row of our table. So let's go up to our formula and edit this. And here we're gonna use the by row function. And here we're gonna calculate our subtotal for each row in our subcategory field. And then the calculation that our by row function is going to do, we need a lambda function. And the lambda function is gonna calculate for each row. It's going to calculate the subtotal. And here again, we're gonna use count A. And it's gonna do that for each row. And when we press enter, then we get the same result, but now we can delete our include column. And our group by function is still going to get filtered based on the category slicer. So there you go, there's two ways that you can add slicers into your group by or pivot by functions in Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. That's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next one.